Our winter concerts at the Crane continue on Sunday, March 8th at 3 o'clock with Dua Ami, who I have the pleasure of speaking with today. Thanks so much for joining me today, Julie, Alyssa. It's so glad to have you here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're very happy to be here. I'm really excited. You're playing our second concert of the season, uh, which is always a treat. Um, you know, I, we often get a great critical mass by the set second concert, mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Have you either, either of you been to our concerts here before? I have. You have? Yes. I have not. Your first yes, time? Yes, and, and yes, you repeat, yes. 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 I remember it's always a good crowd. Like, it's always like the acoustic was very good, and uh, it's just like always good musicians here. I'm so excited that we have the honor of having you uh, oh, for this, Alyssa, really because I know we've honor. been speaking been for some time, about it for years, yes. and we never had a piano for yes. you to come. So yes. our first, our first season with a piano. Yes. Yeah, so it's very exciting. That's, that's a huge bonus because it's going to really open up the array of artists that you can have here, and it's just such a beautiful space. We're really excited. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super pleased. Uh, and I know you know a lot of people. You've actually helped to introduce me to some of the other piano right. players in the right. community, which I'm really appreciative yes. for. Thank you. You're welcome. So, but we're not here to talk about anybody except for the two of you, <laughs> uh, which is an obvious, just such a great talent and such a treat for us to have. You're both very professional women who have done, I know that you both have advanced degrees in other fields beyond music, and you're also very uh, advanced. You both toured around the world um, with music as well. Um, so let's help people get to know you a little bit. Uh, how did you first get introduced to music? I believe you started when you were nine years old, Julie? Yes, yes. So uh, my mother loved the cello. Oh. And uh, I quickly followed suit and just took off like gangbusters and was very lucky to um, be able to play. There was a, a, an amazing uh, cello teacher named Aldo Paraso who uh, was at Yale School of Music. And so I was able to get into his studio and then just went on from there and then went to Curtis Institute of Music mm -hmm. and studied with David Sawyer of the Guarneri String Quartet and uh, did... A, a ton of playing, uh, you know, around um, mostly actually in in the United States, but also Europe and South America, mm. and uh, that's you know generally my, my musical background from my solo early solo and group work. Or? Yes, um, yeah. a lot more solo and chamber music, and then some mm. orchestral music. As that's well. great. Yeah. Alyssa, when did you get introduced? When did you start playing? To be honest, this is all my mother's you memory. Last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's really all my mother's memory because oh. I don't really remember. I only remember wow. when I was, um, I think it was in my kindergarten or my maybe preschool. preschool. Okay. And uh, when I came home, I found a toy piano. It's like this small. And then I remember my mother was changing me and I was playing. So, um, but that's all the memory that I have from. I can't even remember it's when it was my first. Octave, it's a, it's probably like two, like probably two. two. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so my mother, you know, thought maybe, you know, like, you know, I, I was interested in it. You know, she said I was able to repeat the tune that I learned from school on the piano on my own. So that must be when I was three or four years old. So uh, she thought, okay, maybe she has some potential or talent. Since, uh, yeah, that's what yes, she said. obviously. Right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's how I started. That's how I started. So I'm fascinated. You both studied music, mm -hmm. obviously, and that's how you've had all so many opportunities. But then you also found that you were attracted to other disciplines. Right. Um, how did you balance in, in school and, 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 and how do you continue in life to balance your, the, the professional interests and in these you know, intellectual uh, pursuits? Because you're both not just doing, you know, you don't have menial, you're, you're not doing, I don't mean menial, I mean a manual work that you're right. doing. You're doing both intellectual work. How do you balance the, the, the demands of that and the, what it takes to actually do the practice and, and the mental framework to, to, to approach the music? So I, I had a library, library degree um, after I finished my music training. Um, there was all because of a uh, opportunity that I was able to work at the music library when I went to school. And I fell in love with it. So you know, I was, yes. So it was really, it started as a part-time job. Okay. But then I, you know, it, it, it opens to, you know, well to me to the library science and the, the information. And um, then I started to look into the field and I realized that is actually another way of connecting, you know, with different people. So, um, so that's how I, you know, started, you know, I went to, well, I went to library school in Boston after I finished my training in upstate New York. Um, that's how I, you know, that's how I, that's how you yes. It. Yes. And Julie, how about you? So my, uh, I had going, growing up, I had always been very academically focused as well as musically focused. And then going, Curtis was phenomenal, you know, musically. And, uh, but it was almost for me, 
it, it became almost too much of a good thing, and was I missed. Curtis a conservatory. Uh, yeah, or? Curtis Institute of Music. Okay. So uh, it's it's um, so I became uh, I, I I missed that aspect of my life mm -hmm. that I had been in in high pursuit of you know before that. So I decided, uh, and then also I had actually sustained a significant injury to one of my arms during my third uh, year there, and that really threw me for a loop. And I thought, wow, you know, this is I'm so besides, reliant on yeah, yeah on my. Of, you know, physical as well mm. as you know, mental sure. abilities as a musician, and so all of those things led me to uh, explore something different. And I had always been, in particular, um, biology focused, and I uh, decided to do an MD PhD, where you can actually become a, a, a physician scientist. And and the so I you know that took eight years to do my MD PhD, and then I did a residency and a fellowship. Right. Um, but even As during MDs. all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, and, and uh, now I'm a uh, practicing uh, dermatopathologist, which is a pathologist that subspecializes in the um, diagnosis of skin diseases. Mm. And, um, but, the, but I think the, uh, and this is something that I, I like to speak on, particularly to um, children and, and, and college age students, which is that, um, and I think at least probably feels the same way too, that when you focus intensively when you're young and build a technique, of a significant strength that sustains you through branching out in other areas. And so for me, it, it's kind of become, um, you know, sort of my muse in, in medicine is music, you mm. know, it kind of sustains me through, you know, mm. even even issues of burnout, you know, which mm. I'm sure you read a lot about these days. And uh, because I had such a high level, I have been able to continue it by just keeping my playing up, you know, life goes in stages. And so mm. now I'm able to balance, um, you know my my work, which is extremely important, but also my music, which is vital to to, to me as well and to my well being. And something that I love to share, mm -hmm. both with uh, playing with someone who I, who is just a wonderful friend, and we have a great synergy together, and also for the you know for the community. So, uh, but I think if I hadn't put that devotion and dedication and gone to such a school, you know, prior to then going on and doing my my medical studies, I wouldn't be able to do this, you know, we'll be able to sustain both. Because, you know, you had asked, how do I sustain both? And, yeah. and it, you know, it, it isn't easy, but I think without it, I would be um, much you know, sadder. Work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right. So, it's still yeah, a daily challenge. Yes, yeah, yeah. so, you know, and I got, you know, I, sometimes I get up at, um, you know, five in the morning and put a practice mute on and practice you know, before I go in, or I get the kids There's practice out the for cello. Wow. Yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, then I, you is know, that basically just the deadening the strings? Yeah, you like, put it on the, you put so, it on the bridge. Yeah, okay. just clamps on the bridge. Or, you know, I get the kids out the door and then I practice. Oh, so your mom, to work. too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. yeah. That's a whole other profession. Right, I, mean, right, I know. <laughs> oh. But, uh, and then, or, or you know, then, then I go to work and then I come home and do all that and then I practice some more. So, you know, when, especially when we're really gearing up. And so I, I have a very <laughs> regimented life. <laughs> You have to keeps me like, out of trouble. Yes. Or in trouble <laughs> or in all sorts of good right, ways. Right. That's right. <laughs> There's so many things there that I want to explore, but I have a fear that we're going to run out of time. Um, I mean, I'm sure that a lot of this resonates with what you teach students yes. as well. And the yes. most successful yes. students are those that are, are achieving in other avenues as well. Yes. Because the discipline that's required to practice um, and to just be yeah. focused in your studies of, there right. translates to, to success in whatever field right. you're doing. Yeah. Correct. I'm curious. You, you, you touched, talked about burnout, and I know that in this performance you're going to be playing Beethoven and Schubert, yeah. which are very popular composers yes. that I'm sure you've both played many times. Yeah. How do you keep excited about these composers that you keep coming back to? Well, I'm, I'm really glad you asked that particular question because one of the things that we have, um, is kind of our, our thing, I guess, is that we really, really enjoy creating themed programs. And so it's not just, we, we decide on pieces we, we want to play and then how, how do they all fit together? What mm -hmm. brings them together? And we like to create thematic um, visual elements too mm -hmm. and anecdotes and, and uh, stories. So this one that we're going to be um, presenting in less than two weeks now um, is called, uh, uh, it's um, Viennese Tales and Beethoven Schubert and the Art of Musical Storytelling. So the idea is that, um, Beethoven actually said um, that for every single piece that he composed, there was always either an image or a story behind it. And he was adamant about that, that in his mind, the night is for the, that creation was an actual story. 
uh, or, or image. And that really resonated with us. And so what we did in this concert was we tried to both approach the pieces that we were going to play in, in that way by thinking, by, by learning actually about specific stories behind their creation and also uh, choosing some art, you know, for, for that kind of exemplified the, the pieces. And then in terms of how we interpret, you know, th that is a story in and of itself, which we're also going to talk about a little bit when we perform. But I don't know. And every time it's a little bit different, right. I have to say, yeah. you know, from my of personal course. experience, because as a pianist, we don't get to bring our instrument around, right? You know, right? Which is, you know, um, unfortunate and also is also exciting because you just don't know what what piano you're going to be playing, and then the acoustic, you know, in the, in the different places, yeah. and then the audience, the size of the audience, that the audience responds. So. Well, what happened to them earlier in the day? Exactly. Bring in their right. energy. That's why, you know, we find this very, very enjoyable because yeah. every time we play the program, it feels different. Yeah. Mm. It, it does. And, and we and we have, and this is really, and it's true, it's, it's, it's like a, um, when you meet that special friend or person who you can communicate with in a way that is, you know, I can do something of the moment and right. she can and respond, respond and vice yes. versa. And there's right. something very magical about that right. when it you it know is. And it, it just, is uh, it's dialogue yeah it's yeah it, is. it really is it's it just, is it's and it, but you and i think the audience um it, it, it seems to us that the audience appreciates that too you know so many people come up to us that you know you're like a, i think the last concert was like you're like a hand and, and glove like hand and a glove you know when we hear you play it's like it's this kind of one person playing which is just the highest compliment that you could yes. get as a as a as a group. I feel so fortunate that you're going to come play for us. Thank yeah, you. One last thing I want to say is that because you mentioned the visual element, mm -hmm. we're going to make it easy for people to view these. Yes. Yeah. Um, we have a, a link on the program yeah. so people can actually scan it or, or they can just follow the link on their phone. Yeah. So this is going to be one concert <laughs> yeah, that people yeah. go to and Where look at their phone. Just, just turn the ringers off. <laughs> yes, no ringers, but if you, know, so you want to use the display, right. you can appreciate yes. the art. Yes. So people who have phones should bring them. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's great. <laughs> Which is probably the most erotic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, great. I'm super excited to have you here. I know you'll be talking more, and we're going to watch a little clip uh, here in just a moment yeah. uh, from a, a past performance. So thank you. Then, thank thanks you for coming. Thank you so much. We look forward to it. Yeah. Please join us on Sunday, March 8th at 3 o'clock for the second in our winter concerts at the Crane, happening every Sunday afternoon in March at 3 o'clock. Duami will be performing on the 8th, and I look forward to seeing you there. Mm -hmm.